Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to upgrade the memory in an iMac Pro first released in late 2017. You should watch this video in its entirety before attempting this upgrade. This is an extremely difficult process and professional installation is recommended. We've already gathered our materials, backed up our data, shut down and unplugged the iMac Pro, and are working on a soft static free work surface. We're now ready to begin. The first step is to detach the front glass. Do this by inserting the screen removal tool between the glass and the chassis, then slowly working the tool around the edge of the screen to cut the tape holding it to the iMac Pro. Go slowly and don't push out on the screen. We're just cutting the tape, not prying the screen off. The corners may be a little tricky, so you may need to go over them a couple of times. Once you've worked your way all the way around, you can lay the computer face up on your work surface and attach the suction cups to the upper corners. Do one last check to make sure you've loosened all the adhesive around the edges of the iMac Pro. Then lift up on the glass using the suction cups until you can see the cables inside. The cable closest to the top should slide out of its socket. For the other two cables, you'll need to lift up on the black plastic tab to lift the bar that holds the cable in place. Then slide the cable out of its socket. You can now lift the display so it sits vertically. Then, remove the two adhesive strips along the bottom edge using the tab on each one. You can then set the display aside. Next, we're going to remove the fan unit. Start by loosening the two Torx T10 screws near the top part of the iMac Pro. Then, do the same with the two that are located near the heatsink. Next, detach the two ribbon cables by moving the bar on the back of the connector to vertical, then sliding the cable out. You can then lift the fan assembly up and out. Loosen the three Torx T10 screws holding the right speaker in place. And slide the cable connector out of its socket. You should then be able to remove the speaker assembly by pulling gently and rocking it back and forth until it comes free. Next, loosen the three Torx T10 screws on the left speaker. To detach the speaker cable, you'll need to remove the Torx T8 screw holding it and a grounding lead in place. The cable will then slide out of its connector much like the right side one did. You can then lift the speaker unit up and move it over to the side to give yourself a little more room to work. Next, we'll be disconnecting the Bluetooth and AirPort antennas. First, remove these two Torx T5 screws to remove the cover and free the retaining rings. Then, carefully lift up on each button connector to detach the four antenna cables.
Next, we need to remove the cover over this cable connector. The small screw is a Torx T5, and the large one is a Torx T8. Once the screws and cover have been removed, you can simply lift up on the connector to disconnect it. Next, we can remove this cable near the speaker connection by sliding it out of its socket. The same goes for this cable by the power supply. For this ribbon cable near the left speaker connector, lift the bar on the back of the connector to vertical, then slide the cable out. The power board is connected to the logic board via four shiny screws. Remove them using your Torx T8 screwdriver. Finally, we can remove the remaining six Torx T8 screws that hold the logic board in place. Be sure to keep track which screw goes where as that will make reassembly much easier. You should now be able to remove the logic board. You may need to rotate it out and slide it over slightly to account for the SD card reader. The memory is located on the back side of the logic board. To remove the installed RAM, simply pull out on the retaining arms on each slot and its module should be ejected. The lower modules on each side have a shielding tape on them, and it's currently recommended to transfer the tape over to the new modules. Line up two of the new modules so that they're in the same orientations as the originals. Then transfer the tape over so it sits in the same position. To install the new modules in the iMac Pro, make sure that the notch in each of the modules lines up with the pin in the slot. Then, making sure the lower modules have their taped side face up toward the outer edge of the board, slide each module into its slot until the retaining arms snap shut around it. Now it's time to put everything back together. Put the logic board back into place. Start with the SD card reader, then rotate the board into position. Make sure there aren't any cables accidentally trapped underneath. If they are, simply lift up on the board and bring them out. Next, we'll replace all the logic board screws, but don't tighten them down all the way, as we may need to adjust the board later. Start with the two Torx T8 logic board screws next to the heatsink since they're the longest. Then the two along the bottom center. Then finally the ones on the two outside edges.
Next, reconnect the power connectors with the four silver Torx T8 screws. Set the iMac Pro unit upright and place as many cables into the rear connectors as you can to help align the ports with their cutouts. It's recommended you use at least three, but the more you can, the better. Once the ports are aligned, you can then tighten all the Torx T8 screws holding the logic board in place. We can now lay the computer back down and start reattaching cables. Start with the ribbon near the ports that we just aligned. Simply line up the connectors and press them together. Then, replace the cover and the two screws that hold it in, one Torx T8 and one Torx T5. Next, line up the airport and Bluetooth antenna connectors with their connectors on the logic board. Simply line the connectors up and push down until they snap together. The placement of the retaining rings will help you keep them in the right order. Then place the retainer over the top of the cables and secure everything in place using the two Torx T5 screws. Next, reattach this cable by sliding the silver connector into its socket. Then, slide this connector near the power supply into its socket. Slide this ribbon cable back into its socket, then secure it by pushing the bar on the rear of the connector back into its horizontal position. Finally, slide the left speaker cable into its socket and secure it through the metal ring using its Torx T8 screw. We can now move the left speaker back into place and secure it with our Torx T10 screwdriver. To replace the right speaker, you'll first need to weave its cable underneath the logic board as you push the speaker into place. Then fish the cable out along the top edge and slide its connector into its socket before securing the speaker unit in place with your Torx T10 screwdriver. Set the fan unit into place, then reconnect each of the two ribbon cables by sliding it into its ZIF connector and locking it into place with the bar on the rear. Finally, tighten the four Torx T10 screws that hold the fan in place.
We're now ready to replace the glass. The first step is to remove any residual tape on both the chassis and on the back of the display itself. Then, peel off the backing of the adhesive strips and place them along the outer edges of the iMac Pro using the guide included with your kit. With the strips that go along the bottom edge of the screen, start in the center, making sure that the tab on the end hangs out into the body of the computer. You can now peel off the front cover to the tape strips to expose the adhesive. Then, carefully set the bottom edge of the display near, but not quite on, the tape. First, we'll need to reconnect the display cables. The furthest cable back connects by sliding the connector into its socket, then flipping its metal handle forward to lock it in place. The next furthest back connects the same way. The final cable simply slides into its socket. You can now carefully set the glass into place so that all edges are flush around the edges of the iMac Pro. Finally, remove the suction cups and wipe along the edges of the screen with a microfiber cloth to both help seal the screen to the chassis and remove any fingerprints or other marks. You may now hook your iMac Pro back up, plug it in, and turn it on.